grabbing a cup of coffee or in my case today, peppermint tea. And today we are going to be talking about how to use the movies as literature curriculum, but we used it to do British movies as literature for our 10th grade school year last year. everyone. So if you haven't seen our last video, I go into a lot of detail about how I choose each of the videos, like for eighth grade children's literature and ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th. And I went through, like I actually had sat, or sat, I was standing there and I was going to be talking about just the British movies as literature, but it made it easier to just have a separate video to talk about why I choose specifically which topics we do for which grades. So if you haven't seen the video, go back and watch that one. If you have not seen the original video where we cover this book right here, The Movies is Literature, and why we use it, that will also be in the link below. And we have another video on how to use this book to teach advanced placement literature, which yes, you can use this format. Mostly I use this format for my two dyslexic ones, but I have found that my advanced placement students really love going through the advanced placement program for movies as literature, so it works both ways. You can use it for dyslexic, but you can also use it for the advanced placement. Whatever level your child is at, this is a really good curriculum for it. It may not be for everybody. If you don't have a child who can be more focused, motivated to watch a movie and then do a report, this may not be for your kid. But for today's video, in between copious amounts of peppermint tea, because fall, we are gonna be talking about specifically British movies as literature, what my kids did and what my now ninth grader will be doing next year for British movies as literature, which is also why I'm looking down at my phone. How did we choose specific movies for British movies as literature? Oh, so number one, the biggest thing to remember when doing, when doing the movies as literature program, and again, I'm not gonna go into all the depth of how this is built because that's two separate videos based on whichever one you wanna do. Um, whether it be AP or the regular. Biggest thing to remember with movies as literature is number one, it's meant to be fun. Yes, you could go and find some 1950s black and white video based on a literature book and make them watch it. But I mean, honestly, you guys, we're all parents and most of us were raised. If you're watching this and you have high schoolers, most of you were raised in the 80s and 90s. I was raised in the 90s. Most of you remember that time when you, the teacher was like, if you get through this, we're going to watch a video based on this movie. And then you get to sit down and it's like this B-rated black and white poorly put together video and you're like really this is this is what we were building up for was this disappointment and I know like that's not really as much to teachers as it is the school system of like what you can and can't watch for school but again is one of the 10 billion reasons why we homeschool but you remember that I mean some of you who are who were public schooled you remember that disappointment of like I have to watch this and I never wanted my kids to go through that so the first thing we did was we sat down and we're like okay this is for fun you are watching something that you enjoy watching maybe looking at it in a different perspective because you're doing a report on it and learning from it as you go I mean my family we have what we call hard talks there are times that we sit down and watch a movie and we're like Okay, we're watching Star Wars. Let's talk about how the political drama of the, in Star Wars could relate to political drama in the United States today and see how those like interact. And we'll have hard talks like that. And we'll have hard talks of like why we believe certain things or why we do certain things in our family or why we don't eat like the super sugary cereals for breakfast every single day or why we drink orange juice. So like we had those talks. And so like for our kids, like we have those talks already, but we don't also don't want them to be like so bombarded with constant like, oh, it's one of those again. So number one, keep it fun. Number two, base it off of what they love. Like I said in last week's video, if you d completely just don't even want to do, like the way that we did it, we based it off of what other things that our kids were learning. But like if you have a sci-fi lover, do a sci-fi year, do a whole year based on literature written or that's in the sci-fi genre that have movies or episodes or shows to go coincide with it. The biggest emphasis moves in literature is to have fun. Number two, it's to teach in a different way that you may not have taught before. So the first thing that we did was we pulled, the first thing that I did was I pulled up a list um, and you can actually Google this. You can literally Google British literature that has been turned into movies. And there was a list of like a hundred of them. And so you can pull up that list and pick and choose what you want. I will go ahead and say there were some on that list that because of my own personal convictions, I chose not to do them. One of the biggest things for me is I don't do horror. I do not do horror videos. I have two kids 
who do not do horror. And so I don't do horror videos. So I don't do horror movies. I don't do any of the horror genre. So I was like, okay, what do they like? Well, my family, I was going to do members only post to go with this, but then I decided just, I'm not going to do it because I feel like you would be, I would be like building up, building up, building up and be like, Hey, for 99 cents, you can do this. So I don't really want to do that. And also like the 99 cents a month level was set for like our uh, grocery lit or our grocery meal plan each week. So like, I don't really want to confuse the two as well. But let me go through the list real quick of what we did. So the first one that we chose was like Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl was an author who wrote, who was a Brit. And basically the only, the only criteria for us was, was it a British person who wrote literature? Yes. Okay. Let's go from that list. So Roald Dahl was one of them. My kids don't like all of Roald Dahl's work. I grew up reading Roald Dahl. So like some of them, they didn't like some of the ones. One of the big ones that they did love was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And from our own personal opinion, the newer one is actually more based off of the book than the original movie was. So what we did was actually went to Walmart and they had for $5 a two pack of both of them. So we went ahead and bought the two pack and we actually watched both. But the report was based off of the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory because again, that was based more off of the book in our opinion than the original movie was. So that's how we did it was we started with that one. And I may show like a screen share like somewhere right here about now of what our lists look like and how we went through the year with it and what classes we did. Let me just go through the list of what our 10th graders did and then I'll go through the list of other optional ones that we will do. So the first one on the list was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And if you look on here on this list, date watched, it's every other week. That gives them two weeks to do these reports. My dyslexic ones need that much time. My AP ones not necessarily need that much time, but because they are required to do a little bit more. Just a really quick review, the dyslexic children and anybody who's not doing it as an AP course is only required to do like basically a movie review, one paragraph, eight to 10 sentences. What did they, it was either one specific topic they learned, a favorite character, or an overall movie review. The advanced placement students are required to do a three to five paragraph report plus actually read the book to go with it. Yes, I could make my dyslexic ones read the book with it, but again, like they're dyslexic. They don't like reading and it's really difficult for them to read and it takes them longer to read. So we don't actually require them to read, read it if it's optional. One of them well, optional does it. One of my extremely dyslexic ones doesn't. So the first movie was Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. Then two weeks later, we did Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And again, that was one that like, it was one of the movies that I watched as a kid that was like, hey, you guys might like this movie. So we bought it on DVD as well. Then the next six were the ones that they were so excited for. My kids are huge Lord of the Rings fans um, and The Hobbit. So yes, we know that The Hobbit, the three movies are not based off of just The Hobbit book. You also add in the other two books. One of the things like I tell people is like, once you start your homeschooling journey, just pray and God's going to provide as you go. When my kids went to start 10th grade movies, as, uh, British movies as literature, Sam's Club had the first two books, the ones that come before The Hobbit, on sale at Sam's Club. So we were able to buy the first two books and then the rest of them were on Tennessee Reads, which is a free online digital book checkout system. So that was pretty cool. So for six weeks, we did uh, the three Hobbit movies and then the three Lord of the Ring movies. Then for the month of December, what I did for my kids was we had a super busy December last year. So what we do is we had a jar and we had like writing prompts. And this is a little bit different for movies as literature. Um, they would draw out a writing prompt from the jar and they would have to do something from it. Honestly, for this, for the writing prompts list, I went to, Inst uh, to Pinterest and I pulled up writing prompt ideas and then I wrote down my favorite ones. They had one jar for Christmas theme and one jar for not Christmas theme. That way if we were traveling and didn't have access to one of our videos, which we had one time that that happened, um, they would just draw from the non-Christmas theme writing prompt. But then for the month of December, they drew from the Christmas writing prompt. Like one of them was like a sled, a candle, and a gift. So like that kind of writing prompt. Then when they started the new year back, they got to do their other favorites. They got to do the Chronicles of Narnia. Now, if you want to do, there is actually year round homeschooling with Misty Lee's has on her website, year round homeschooling has worksheets that you can purchase from her for $2 per book. So there's seven books, $2 each. So for $14, you could purchase a one year literature curriculum 
and just cover the Chronicles of Narnia. I throw that in there because like I want people to realize there's more options for this British literature than just the movies and just that. And like honestly, if it weren't for my kids, huge love for the Lord of the Rings. And like we have the extended version of both the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings. It's like 24 hours of video. If it weren't for my kids, huge love for that. I probably would have just went with that. I would have just done Misty Leaks review or uh, worksheets that she sells for all seven of the Chronicles of Narnia books. And you can do that. That's an option. Go for it. It's still composition and literature. And then the three movies that do tie in with the seven books, you could watch it with it. Um, so that's kind of like, that's another option you could do as well. But our kids, because they wanted to do Lord of the Rings, we added it. And it was something for them to like look forward to whenever Christmas break was over, was we get to start Chronicles of Narnia. So that was something really fun for them to look forward to. And then you see on here on our list, um, the last one was The Lion King and Hamlet. This one was one that I was really super excited to do because I got to show my kids that The Lion King was based on Shakespeare's play, Hamlet. And we found a free version of Hamlet to watch, no, we ended up Crash Course had an overview of Hamlet and we watched that because the one version of Hamlet we wanted to watch was not free and I didn't want to have to pay for it when I already had I already bought the Lion King dual pack, the one that has the animated and the one that has live action. The reason why I still buy DVDs is because my van has a DVD player. That way when we're traveling, like around the time that they were doing this, we took that trip to uh, South Carolina and so that way they could watch videos while we were traveling. Um, and not just while we were at home. So that's why I still buy DVDs. The reason why there was a little bit of lack in there was once we hit March, it, we had like a crazy busy spring. And so most of the time um, we were either going back and reviewing some of the work and like getting caught back up on that, or we were doing just creative writing prompts because we were traveling so much. So that one doesn't really show you a full list of like optional ones. This is the full list for my current ninth grader of what she is thinking of doing for 10th grade. So because of the way it works out, transcripts and things, we try to have like a list of what each child is thinking of doing. So that way, if like we ever had to report it to the state for a full year, um, in Tennessee in public school in eighth grade, you're required to fill out your full transcript before you start ninth grade of like all the classes you're thinking of doing and plugging them in um, as you go. So like we went ahead and had, was like, if we still do British movies as literature, what movies do you wanna do? So this is another list of ones that are not on here. So one of the ones that um, we wanted to do with the other two that just finished British movies literature that my rising, or my current ninth grader and eighth grader are looking at doing next year is um, A Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens. We ended up not getting to do that one because at the time we did not have Disney Plus for a couple of months and we could not find an affordable DVD Blu-ray of it. At the moment, we still, we were able to get back on our subscription for Disney Plus. So we have access to it. So my current ninth grader is looking at doing a Christmas Carol at Christmas time. Cause I like doing a Christmas movie cause it also kind of just like changes things up a bit. So also, you know, like keep that in mind for whenever you're doing it. Also in December, I only do one movie. I only do one, we only do one for the month of December. Number one, we take two weeks off it in December. And number two, one movie makes it easier just focus on it get it done and make it christmas theme because then it'll help them to want to do it um other optional movies that we did and some of these movies we ended up having to add back in for my ninth grader because again i've talked about before we don't do all the movies in the movies as literature book we don't like all of them we take the horror ones out we take out some of the more romance ones because i just I don't know, I, I, I was not a fan of some of the romance ones that were in there. So we take out some and then we put in more like Bible-based movies instead, or we added in some ones that were like the same genre. And like we did a, we did two different Westerns instead of the Westerns that were in the movies as literature book for my current ninth grader. Um, so that's completely different. Um, and I can talk about that maybe a different time, I don't know. Um, but some of these that are on the British movies as literature, that's the reason why my other two 10th graders didn't, my now 11th graders didn't do it, is because they had done it over the summer when they did ninth grade movies as literature. Um, so other movies that you could also add in that we suggest, and this is again our personal preference list of ones that we like that are optional, is um, Black Beauty, 
Peter Pan. And for Peter Pan, um, what she's planning on doing is watching the animated one and then the new live action one, Peter Pan and Wendy. James and the Giant Peach, because again, Roll Doll, which also, if you wanted to, you could add in Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator book as well with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory if you have somebody who really loves to read whenever you're doing Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And then the last one on here is The Princess Bride. The Princess Bride actually ended up becoming the first ninth grade one that we did for my ninth grade student. So that is it for our British Movies as Literature review, how it worked out and how we are gonna implement a couple more things in for our uh, ninth grader who'll be in 10th grade last year and how it worked out for our 11th graders that just finished 10th grade this year. If you would like, and I'm not, like I said, I did decide not to do the full movie list on members only posts because some of you don't have the funds to cover that and that's completely okay. Um, if you would like, at if you contact me once you sign up for the 99 cents a month membership for our channel i will make you like a pdf and could send you like a pdf schedule of how we did the movies every other week movie suggestions uh, suggested writing prompts that we use for our kids for that and i will do that as an optional you can sign up for the 99 cents a month and then comment on the members only page and i will do that but otherwise i just decided i wanted to make this free to you guys because like i know like for us right now the reason why we push membership so much is because Things changed at my husband's work and we needed the extra funds right now. So that's kind of why we did it. But I wanted to also provide this for free because I know if we're kind of having some funds issues, maybe other people are as well. But that's it for today's video. Even if you cannot afford membership, every single one of you that likes, co positive comments, subscribes, that seriously helps us out and helps us to keep going and making these videos instead of me having to get a part-time job while homeschooling my kids. So thank all of you for every single thing you do. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time as we talk about my eighth grader this year doing children's movies as literature.